All right, come on, Jake. Remember, remember, it's a kid's game. I mean, for crying out loud, no one, I mean, no one loses Monopoly every single time to a bunch of kids. Let's get our plan. Let's get a plan. We can do this. All right, I'm going to get Park Place. Got to go after Boardwalk. I got to build some hotels. I got to try to bankrupt every one of these little punks. Can do it. It's a great plan. All right, here we go. All right, kids, I'm ready. Yeah, whatever. I mean, where'd you get all those $500 bills anyway? Come on. I hate playing games when my plan doesn't work out. I mean, you gotta have a plan, but you gotta be able to adjust your plan. Fantasy football's no difference. That's why we mock draft. And in this episode, I guess we're gonna have to figure out how to adjust our plans. Hit the intro. What is going on, Headliner Nation, Jake Fantasy Headliners? Hopefully everybody's doing well out there today where we're talking about a mock draft. And we're going to be doing a 12-team mock draft here in just a minute, but there's an underlining theme to this show here, and it's all about making a plan and kind of being agile and adjusting that plan if need be during your real draft. Because let's be realistic, right? Uh, If you've ever been in a real draft of fantasy football, you understand that it's unlike a lot of the mock drafts that you'll do online regardless of the site that you do it on. They just never seem to go that way. So you have to be able to adjust your plan. So you want to make sure, you know, you go into a draft with an actual plan. So you'll have your basic draft plan of, hey, I want to go running back the first three rounds. I got to make sure I'm stacked at running back. I don't want a quarterback to the double digit rounds. Same thing for the tight end. I want to make sure that I have a balanced approach. You know, two quarterbacks, five running backs, five wide receivers, two tight ends, whatever it may be based on your league settings. But You also want to go in there with a plan B just in case. All right, hey, somebody falls to me in this draft. Uh, Maybe I'll go three running backs in the first four rounds just in case there's a name there that I wasn't expecting, but yet I'll still get the running backs I'm looking for. All right, maybe I won't wait all the way till round 10 for a quarterback if Dak or Kyler are sitting there in round six. Maybe that's too good of a value to pass up. Tight end? I'm kind of thinking that, you know, Gronk is a possible value right there at round seven because you can get some insurance policies late in the draft to kind of handcuff him with. The balanced approach, that one is is something I probably was going to try to stick to, right? You don't want to be super, super heavy on just one position and no depth somewhere else. So you just have to make sure that you have an understanding. Do you have to write it down in a notebook like this? No, not necessarily. But you have to kind of, you know, know what to expect if this happens. This is what I'm going to do. And that's kind of what we're talking about here today. Yeah, I'm going to go into this draft with this draft plan, but then we're going to see how do I need to be a little bit more agile and maybe where the backup plan comes into place. So if that's going to help you out, we got a 12-team mock draft. Hit the like button because we're about to spit all kinds of fantasy football knowledge right now. All right, here we go. We're going to go ahead and get this draft set up. As you can see on the Fantasy Pros Draft Wizard, got a 12-team snake draft, half-point PPR, one quarterback, two running back, two wide receivers, a tight end, a flex spot in seven bench spots going from the 10th position. Uh, it's just something I randomized. So let's go ahead and see how this works out. How do we go in with a plan and make adjustments to said plan during the draft? Now, if you haven't used this tool yet, it's a great way to mock draft quickly. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to give you different scenarios all the time. I mean, is it 100% real life? No, but no mock draft is, right? So we're going to go ahead and get our roster queued up here. I'm going to hide my tiers. Why? Because they're not my tiers. I don't care. We're going to hide the drafted players because they're gone already. So as you can tell, we want to go heavy running back early, right? We talk about it all the time. We want three running backs. I want to try to start with three running backs. It's out of control right now. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire all the way up here at eight. Not buying it, right? I mean, we've talked about it numerous times on this channel before. A lot of people want to buy into the hype because there is no sports here for so long that they're going to clamor to anything that happens, right? I'm not overpaying. The very first time that this kid touches the ball in the NFL is going to be a real game week one against the Houston Texans. 
I don't want to spend a first round pick on something that's unknown. Do I like the talent? Yeah. Do I like the situation? Yeah, I like the offense. Absolutely. But there's more proven commodities around him. Uh, a lot of people think that, you know, he's just going to go in there and get every touch in the backfield. I, I don't think he is. He's still going to have to share a little bit. Yes, by midseason, this dude is going to take off. I'd rather pass in the first round, let somebody else pay that high draft price, and then scoop, you know, sweep in about four weeks into the season or so. And if he's struggling, maybe that team owner is, is struggling overall as a team because his first round pick isn't producing. You can go in there and make an offer, a, a nice offer, get Clyde Edwards Hilaire because the second half of the season where the value is really going to be for him, I don't want to have to worry about a possible struggle to start the season. As of right now, in my rankings, Nick Chubb is running back five. A lot of people don't want to believe that. That's fine. Uh, that upgrade in that offensive line, a run first coach now. Yes, Kareem Hunt is there, but there are more than enough touches in this backfield. Jarvis Landry, he's been put on the active PUP list. It does sound like he'll be ready for week one, but how limited is he? Is he going to be a 100% full go week one? Possibility he's not. More targets going the way of Odell Beckham. We know about Austin Hooper. David Njoku is still there. But with those two tight end sets, we could see a heavy, heavy run game. And I'm not passing on Nick Chubb. I'm still taking Nick Chubb right here in the first round. So now we'll let it go through, automate its picks. We can look at the draft board real quick, see how the first round went. McCaffrey, Barkley, Zeke, and Kamara. About as one through four as you can possibly get. I've seen people taking Clyde Edwards-Hilaire number one overall. I don't, I don't get that. Not at all. Michael Thomas, first one off the board, number five. Henry Adams, Cook Mixon, Chubb, Jacobs, Julio, Tyreek, and Hopkins. So after we took Chubb, Jacobs came off the board, who was a great pick, followed by three, running, uh, three wide receivers. So we should have our pick here. A, a lot of talent at the running back position. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire still there, now into the second. It becomes a little bit interesting, right? We're in the early second. If this was a late second round pick, and some of these guys like Kenyon Drake or Miles Sanders were already off the board, I would consider Clyde Edwards Hilaire. However, I love Kenyon Drake and Miles Sanders, both of them. I, I've done videos on here this offseason as they're, they're must-have running backs for me. The, the backfield of the Arizona Cardinals last year, if you combine all the starting stats of the three running backs that they had start games for them, they would have combined to be running back three overall. The ceiling is huge. Miles Sanders really has nobody to worry about in that backfield. A great offensive line to run behind. Opportunity for touches because, you know, Alshon Jeffrey, he's not 100%. Marquise Goodwin, he opted out. Deshaun Jackson, he never plays 16 games. The, the opportunities for Miles Sanders are going to be there, and he can see a lot of three-down work. Either one of these guys, I love right now. I can't go wrong with either one of them. My rankings have Kenyon Drake uh, one, uh, a couple spots higher. However, in this draft, I'm going to switch it up a little bit. Uh, like I said, you know, half six of one, half dozen of the others at the same doesn't really matter. I love both of them, but just to be a little bit different for this mock draft, I'm going to go with Miles Sanders here as my RB two. Starting off with Chubb and Sanders would actually give me Chubb in real life, if anybody really cared. Uh, so here's the thing. Now I want to go running back again, right? I'd like to swoop in here and be like, all right, cool. Let me just get my three running backs, but I got to take a look because here's where you may want to make a little bit of an adjustment to your plan. Look at what's available to you. I like Todd Gurley. I think that James Conner bounces back, especially as an RB3. David Johnson as an RB3 is another good option. Mark Ingram, another guy who I love. I have four options right there without even going any further down the list that I really like as my running back three. Well, there's less risk because they're number three. Now, Todd Gurley is my highest ranked one as of right now, but maybe I should look at wide receiver because even though that I want another running back, grabbing a wide receiver here may help out because I'm still going to get one of my other four guys that I want. They're not all going to go here in the next couple picks. So I have my choice between Juju, Cup, and Woods. I've done a video on Robert Woods, really high on Robert Woods. I do think the cuff still runs over here in 2020. And Juju is intriguing. A lot of people hopping off the bandwagon because of what happened with Juju last year. I'm not completely hopping off. It's 100% it's tied to the fact that how healthy is Big Ben? Because if Big Ben is healthy, Juju is a top 10 wide receiver in fantasy football. Big Ben is not healthy. We kind of see what we saw last year with Juju because and, and, they didn't really address the quarterback position in the offseason. So the one thing that has me kind of caught up on not taking Juju 
is I'd love to get me some Deontay Johnson a little bit later in drafts, and I wouldn't really want both of them. Uh, because if I, if I draft both of them, something happens to Ben where he's not 100%. Now I've kind of lost two picks who've lost a lot of value. So I don't know if I want to do both of those. Cooper Cup, Robert Woods. In my opinion, the safest option here is Robert Woods. Safest floor. He doesn't have the highest ceiling, but he's the safest floor to be a wide receiver. One, he's going to see over 130 targets in the passing game. We know he's going to be involved. There's no more Brandon Cooks there. The running game is going to be eh for a little bit because it's going to be a committee to start. The offensive line is not 100%. We could see more passing volume in this offense. I think Woods is the safest bet. If you want to gamble a little bit, you go with Juju. Now, for the, the sake of this episode, I'm going to go with Juju, and then we can look at other options later in the draft because I've talked about Deontay Johnson a lot. You've heard a lot about him, so that'll give me an opportunity to speak on another name a little bit later in the draft. So because, as of right now, Juju is healthy, uh, not, excuse me, not Juju, but Ben Roethlisberger is healthy, Juju has that top 10 upside, which I absolutely love. Uh, don't let last year bother you. All we can really base it on is, is what we see from Big Ben. A practice video came out recently with him out there throwing the ball. He looked pretty good. I mean, he looked pretty solid, right? So we'll start off here with Chubb, Sanders, and Juju. But now we have to go back to running back because I, if I wait again, we have a long run of picks. We can go back to the draft board and take a look. So here, after we took Sanders, you got Jones, Lamar Jackson in the second round. Can't do that. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire finally went middle of the second Followed by Evans, Drake, Galladay, Kelsey, Eckler. Love the Eckler pick there at the end. If I'm picking the end of the second, Austin Eckler is going to be on my roster if he's sitting there. Uh, Allen Robinson, Odell, Andrews, more Kittle, Mahomes, uh, Cooper, Thielen, Fournette. Here's my pick of Juju. Then we went Gurley, Taylor, Cup, and Darren Waller coming off in the fourth round, which is a little bit early for my liking. Anyway, so now that leaves us with Connor, who I'm not going to go with Connor because I just took Juju. I don't want back-to-back -back Steelers. I mean, I don't mind having two people from the same team, don't get me wrong, uh, certain teams. I don't know if I want to have both of them uh, when they're tied to a quarterback who's unknown, plus James Conner has his own injury concerns. It's a little bit too much for me, so that leaves it up to David Johnson or Mark Ingram for my running back three. David Johnson, a little bit more risky, right? A lot of people looking for the bounce back, myself included, and it's great value in the fourth round, don't get me wrong. Mark Ingram is probably a lot safer right here for me because we kind of know what we get with him, right? We're going to get 200 to 225 touches on the best rushing team in all of football. He's going to have goal line opportunities because the offense is going to put him in a good position. He's not overly involved in the passing game, but he has the super safe floor. He still has a top 12, you know, floor. This is not some guy who's just a, eh, he'll do all right. The upside is still there for Mark Ingram and possibly his last year in Baltimore. Why are they not going to go out there and just run him into the ground, get the most out of him as they can? Because after next year, it's the J.K. Dobbins show anyway. Chris Carson, worried about the hip injury. Melvin Gordon, they just lost a key piece of their offensive line. Plus, Philip Lindsay is still there. Le'Veon Bell, no thanks. I don't want anything to do with that Jets offense. Uh, it's kind of a dumpster fire in New York right now. I mean... They're falling apart. I mean, they just they released one of their offensive linemen and they got picked up by the Bills. I have no idea what's going on in New York, so I don't want any part of that. So it's down to Johnson and Ingram. Personally, based off of the roster that I already have, I'm staying a little bit safer because the, the floor is still there. I'm going with Mark Ingram to go with Miles Sanders and Nick Chubb to give me that safe option here at running back three, my flex spot weekly. Solid weekly flex. So now that I have... My three running backs, we got to see what's left on the board, right? we got Terry McLaurin. Okay, love Terry McLaurin, especially in the fifth round. Devontae Parker, not with Terry McLaurin on the board, that's for sure. Same thing with Stephon Diggs, Jarvis Landry. We talked about him not being 100% healthy. A.J. Green, the ceiling is huge. I mean, the ceiling is astronomical for A.J. Green, but so is the risk, especially when, as of right now, whoever I pick, I am reliant on starting on a weekly basis, more than likely at my wide receiver position. With that in mind, it's not really uh, a, a, a thought process here, right? I'm going Terry McLaurin. I love the potential of Terry McLaurin. Uh, I, I like you know, Dwayne Haskins this year. I think he has an opportunity to bounce back and really surprise a lot of people. Kelvin Harmon going down only helps Terry McLaurin. The volume should be there. Uh, a lot of options in the backfield to worry about, but Terry McLaurin and, and Antonio Golden Gandy, Gandy Golden on the outside, these are guys who are, 
are going to get some opportunities in this offense, and I love me some Terry McLaurin, especially as my wide receiver, too, in, what, the fifth round? Yeah, I'll, I'll take that 100%. So now, uh, typically, at this point, I'm going to start looking at tight end. I'll look at quarterback. I mean, it is, what, the one, two, three, four, fifth, sixth round, and Russell Wilson is still sitting there. Now, at the beginning graphic, I said if Dak or Kyler were there, I would consider it. But I said that thinking that there's no way that Russell Wilson is even sitting there. Uh, for him to fall this far, he becomes an option at tight end. Evan Ingram, Tyler Higby, Hunter Henry, Hayden Hurst, Rob Gronkowski is the name that was on that original graphic. Somebody who I would target like in the 7th or 8th. But I still got some room there, right? I don't know if I'm not going to reach for him yet. There's some other good options that I still like there with Hayden Hurst. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of Evan Ingram. Uh, we got uh, Jared Cook is another solid option. We love Jonu Smith. So I'm not going to reach early. So it's between Russell Wilson, Devin Singletary being on the board as my you know running back four would be amazing. Uh, at the wide receiver position, we still have that upside of A.J. Green. Uh, do we want to take that risk? Do we want to put him on the bench and hope for the best with A.J. Green? A lot of people are like, nope, I would never draft him. I would go with Hollywood Brown over A.J. Green. And if you want to play it safe, I 100% agree with you. Hollywood Brown has the potential to have a huge year this year. I also have Terry McLaurin already. I don't want every second year wide receiver because if they don't pan out, my team is going to be playing catch up. I have to have some of that safety uh, in there already. I don't think Stephon Diggs is a bad option here as my wide receiver three. I've talked about Stephon Diggs a little bit and how I'm not overly excited to have to start him weekly, to have to start him weekly. I wouldn't have to right now, right? The Bills' offense, much improved. They just stole the offensive lineman from the Jets like we talked about. A solid running game with, with Devin Singletary there. Everybody's talking about Zach Moss. Don't talk about Zach Moss that much. Yes, he'll get some volume. He'll take over some of the Frank Gore workload. But he's not going to outwork Devin Singletary in the running game. Uh, it's just not going to happen. Cam Akers, I love the talent. I think next year he's going to be a huge pick. Kareem Hunt to kind of handcuff Nick Chubb. He becomes an option. Uh, I love Jordan Howard. I think he's somebody who's a great bench stash for running back. Right now, honestly, though, it's between Devin Singletary and Stephon Diggs. I think either one of these guys is a slam dunk home run uh, for my bench. To start off my bench, I love me some running back depth. I do. I really, really love it. And I should probably take Kareem Hunt. But here, I'm taking a little bit of a gamble, and I'm going with Stephon Diggs this round. We'll see who comes back to me. Now, I'm sure still going to have my pick of the litter at tight end. So do I want to go right here? I mean, the original plan was to wait till round 10 for the tight end, right? We're in the round We're in round seven. And I said, hey, round seven, I may need to reach for Gronk. And I'm, I could if I really, really wanted him right now. But there's still some other names I like. I've talked about Jordan Howard. I didn't take a running back, you know, for my bench last you know, round with Devin Singletary. The smart play is to probably take Jordan Howard now for my bench. And a lot of people are like, dude, Jordan Howard sucks. He's the running back of the Dolphins. Totally understand that. 100% understand that. But the Dolphins are a lot better than last year. They improved their defense dramatically. So they should be a lot closer in games to where they can actually utilize their running game. Yep, Matt Breida is going to be involved. But early down work, goal, uh, goal line work, that's all going to be Jordan Howard. 100% that's going to be Jordan Howard. And I don't hate him as my running back four. Now, obviously, I don't want to have him as my running back one or two. But as my running back four, I don't hate it. So to give me some bench depth there at the running back position, somebody who's going to touch the ball at least 200 times this year, and you're getting him at the end of the seventh. Remember, you can't score points if you don't touch the ball. He's got to touch the ball, and he gives great depth on your bench. Uh, now we have... Uh, still, pick of the litter right here before we have to wait a while. Remember, this is the last time before we're going to have to, you know, wait for quite a few picks to go by. We have our quarterback. Uh, actually, no, excuse me. We don't have our quarterback yet because we didn't take Russell Wilson earlier. So now we got Matthew Stafford, Aaron Rodgers, Daniel Jones, Big Ben, Ryan Tannehill. Do any of those names jump off the list? I like Matthew Stafford. Uh, if I take Matthew Stafford, then I have to take somebody else later on as a little bit of an insurance policy since he is coming off of a back injury. So that is something to think about. Uh, I'm not interested in Sony Michelle, Matt Breida. I'm not putting both Miami running backs on my bench. 
J.K. Dobbins would be a nice handcuff to Mark Ingram, but I'm not going to handcuff my running back three. Tariq Cohen, Keyshawn Vaughn, Tevin Coleman, not overly exciting. Marvin Jones, Will Fuller, Christian Kirk, Deontay Johnson. We talked about him earlier. I'm not going to take Deontay Johnson and Juju because I would probably never start them together. And I don't want to have somebody on my bench that I can't start with one of the guys who I'm reliant upon here this year. Evan Ingram, Hunter Henry, Hayden Hurst, and Gronk. I would love to have a duo of Hayden Hurst and Rob Gronkowski. I would love that. I think that that would be a solid you know, pair of tight ends. Because if you draft Gronk, you've got to draft the insurance policy for him also. Because we just don't know after last year not playing, what are we really going to get with him I have right now a projection of right around six, 700 yards receiving, but he does have right around a 10 touchdown projection. So that's easily a, t- a tight end one that you're going to get here, eighth round or later. Uh, based off the board, I can look over here and see who has all taken a tight end. So we've already had one, two, three, four, five teams take a tight end. So by the time that it comes back to me, that's 10 spots that aren't going to take tight ends. So there's a chance that Gronk falls. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take Hayden Hurst first. I think he is the safer option. If Rob Gronkowski is taken during this run of picks, I have my backup plan, which is Jonu Smith right here, to pair him with Hayden Hurst. So we're waiting on quarterback because there's still some names down in here that I do not mind whatsoever. Uh, and we're going to wait uh, on Gronk one more. Let's see what happens. We'll go Hayden Hurst. And as you can tell... It is working out in in our favor here right now. Rob Gronkowski is still sitting there. Uh, A quarterback, Matthew Stafford, is still sitting there also. So we didn't lose anything there. We have the balance that we wanted to start off with, right? We've got, what, four running backs. We have three wide receivers, and there's still plenty of wide receivers to choose from. I mean, you look, we got the likes of a Golden Tate, who is a solid bench wide receiver. Jalen Rager, a rookie wide receiver who we really love. Miko Hardman, another second-year guy that we really love. One of these guys is going to be on my roster probably in the 10th round. But for this pick right here, because Matthew Stafford fell all the way to the ninth, this is a guy who was playing at an MVP level, and he fell to me not expecting it. Now, before I pick him, a lot of people are going to say, dude, you're passing on Aaron Rodgers. Yep, I'm passing on Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I'm not overly excited about the Green Bay offense. This could turn into kind of some drama in Green Bay. He doesn't have a whole lot of weapons to throw to. His number two option is Alan Lazard, Jay Sternberger, a lot of Devontae Adams, a lot of all the running backs in the backfield. Worries me with Aaron Rodgers. I'll take Matthew Stafford right here, and I'll just back him up with somebody a little bit later in the draft. So here we go. Now we're into the 10th. This is where I said I would take one of these guys. Now, if I take one of these guys, if I take myself a Mecole Hardman or a Golden Tate, uh, it looks like we lost Jalen Rager. He's no longer available. He was stolen from us. Last pick right there of the ninth round. He went. So we lost out on Jalen Rager, but I love the upside of of one uh, Mecole Hardman. If you haven't watched a, a video I did on second-year wide receivers, Miko Hardman could be in line for a huge, huge year. But adjusting our plan, right? Is he going to wait another round or two? I mean, look how far down the list he is. We still have Evan Ingram and Gronk available. Now, I said I was going wide receiver because I expected some more of these names to come off the top of the list. They did not. They're still there. That leads me to believe that he may make it another round and I don't have to reach. It gives me the opportunity to get my guy that I wanted and go with Gronk right here. So let's do that. Go in there. And now we have a roster of Stafford, Chubb, Sanders, Juju McLaurin, Hurst, Ingram, Diggs, Howard, and Gronk. Uh, Overall, love the team. It's super, super solid. It has high upside. It has safety. All of it together. Uh, what's left on the board now? Our boy Miko Hardman sitting right at the top. I could go into all the other positions. Don't really need to. I need a wide receiver right here. I've already talked up Miko Hardman and he fell to me in the 11th. Thank you very much. Give me some Miko. Uh, now we're pretty balanced, right? We got ourselves uh, one quarterback, two tight ends. We've got what? One, two, three, four running backs, four wide receivers. I mean, we're pretty balanced right now. We do need a backup plan. 
for Matthew Stafford, and Aaron Rodgers is still sitting here in the 12th round. Now, I could take Aaron Rodgers for the sake of this mock draft and try to you know, make my team look even better, but let's be realistic. He's not going to be there in the 12th, so I'm going to pretend he's not even there right now. Further down the list, Daniel Jones. I mean, Kyle just came out with an argument for Daniel Jones to be a must-have quarterback, and it was pretty intriguing. The guy had you know, a, a few games last year where he showed some flashes of QB1 numbers coming into his second year. He has an opportunity in a Jason Garrett offense to, to put up some solid numbers. Big Ben, I could pair him with Juju, but do I want to take one injury-prone quarterback uh, or coming back from an injury, at least with Stafford, and pair him with Roethlisberger? Probably not. Ryan Tannehill, he's kind of fallen down draft boards. Jared Goff, Cam Newton. I love the uh, possibility of Cam Newton. I love the chip on the shoulder of Cam Newton in New England. Another thing I like with New England, and this is, I'm going to probably talk myself into Cam right here, which is crazy because I just talked about, you know, injured quarterbacks, but their defense is basically gone in New England. I mean, it's basically non existent at this point. Uh, they're going to have to score a lot of points, they're going to have to throw the ball a lot. Cam Newton's pissed. He's already circled a few games on the calendar of some guys with some revenge. I'm going to talk myself into it, and I'm, it's going to be a slight reach, but I want the potential upside of what Cam Newton is. So I'll take him here as my backup quarterback. If I get one of the big guys at the beginning, if I get a Dak, a Russell Wilson, a Kyler Murray, I probably don't take a second quarterback. But if I'm kind of going this later round quarterback strategy, I'm probably going to grab two of them. Now, the good thing about this is even though Cam is not somebody who is a model of great health as of late, look what we have available still. You still have Derek Carr, Phillip Rivers, Drew Locke. I'm going to, I'm going to bust out some serious knowledge on Drew Locke this week. Uh, Gardner Menchu, Jimmy G, a lot of other options there. Baker's still sitting there. Solid guys to stream if need be. Uh, so now that we got that, best player available. Jonu Smith is still sitting here. Am I taking three tight ends? No, I'm not. Uh, wide receivers, Perryman, Ayuk, Campbell. I love me some Paris Campbell, especially with T.Y. Hilton already dealing with an injury. Paris Campbell could eat up some targets with Phillip Rivers under center. At the running back position, you got Darrington Evans. He won't see much with uh, Derrick Henry. Carlos Hyde. Carlos Hyde is very intriguing because I talked earlier about uh, Chris Carson dealing with a hip injury. I mean, every time he touches the ball, he's either going to get hit on or, or land on that injured hip one hit and Carlos Hyde is the running back of the Seattle Seahawks and he put up a thousand yards with the Texans he could do way more damage with Seattle he gives me an option as my number five on the bench because when you look down the list is there anybody that really excites me no not really at the wide receiver position I think Paris Campbell may you know wait another round possibly he can wait and if he doesn't if he does if he is taken, Brandon Ayuk, another name that I, I really like still. Cole Beasley is being slept on, for, for the love of all things holy. Mohamed Sanu. I could always grab Sanu super late as my wide receiver, what, five? And possibly he's the number one uh, in New England with uh, Cam Newton because a lot of people think it's still Julian Edelman, but why? Based off of what Tom Brady did with him? There's some options there. So we're, we're cutting off quarterback. We're cutting off tight end. Not looking defense or kicker yet, so we're right here. And right now, I'm a running back guy, right? I'm looking for somebody here to give me a little bit of depth. And I'm just taking a stab on Carlos Hyde late. I'm not reliant on him. If Chris Carson is not 100% healthy, I'm okay with that because I'm not reliant on him, but he gives me a, a solid opportunity. Plus, it's not out of the question for Seattle to use two running backs. Ayuk and Campbell, still sitting here. And I have a feeling they're going to remain there. They're probably not even going to be selected. It would not be sur- I would not be surprised if they're both available in the last round. But here's the beauty of it. One of them is going to be available with the next pick more than likely. So why not go down there and snag a better defense around early before somebody else has a chance to take somebody you like? Now, the Saints are a defense that I'm very intrigued on this year. They're, they're going all in this year. They know that they don't have a whole lot of Drew Brees time left. They've put together a lot of solid pieces in New Orleans. Uh, the Rams, another solid piece, but they got to deal with some, some higher-powered offense this year. The Saints, they're going to have to deal with Tampa Bay uh, and Atlanta. Numerous times, possible shootouts. That's a little bit worrisome. Uh, there's not a whole lot of great, great options. I mean, the top six defenses are already gone. 
I'm going to go ahead and gamble one round early. I'm going to go the Saints, and I'm going to hope that Ayuk or Campbell fall to me. Campbell is gone. Brandon Ayuk is going to remain there. And we will wait. And here's another option if you want to. If you're really sold on kickers. I get kicker questions every once in a while. Harrison Butker, Will Lutz, they're still sitting there. Justin Tucker is gone. If you want the kicker for the number one offense possibly in the NFL and you want to take them now, go ahead. Because there's going to be other options for me uh, at the wide receiver position if I need it. Um, It's really up to you. For the sake of this one, sure, why not? And a lot of regular season leagues that I'm in, I won't even draft a kicker. I'll draft an extra position player and then drop somebody from my bench to pick up a kicker before the season starts. I mean, I'd rather pick up a Carlos Hyde. And what happens if Chris Carson goes down in the first week of practice? I have Carlos Hyde on my bench instead of a kicker. You know what I mean? That would make some sense. Uh, Brandon Ayuk still sitting here. So he's going to be my last pick. High upside, especially if Debo uh, does not make it back in time. So it's going to spit out a grade here of a 78 over 100. But let's be realistic, people. Don't pay attention to draft grades. Look at the actual roster for yourself. You got Stafford, Chubb, Sanders, Juju, uh, Terry McLaurin, Hayden Hurst, Mark Ingram, the New Orleans Saints, Harrison Butker, Diggs, Howard, Gronk, Miko Hardman, Cam Newton, Carlos Hyde, and Brandon Ayuk. Overall, a solid lineup with a safe floor and, and some serious, you know, ceiling, some upside. I mean, Miles Sanders alone has some huge upside. Don't sleep on Matthew Stafford. He was an MVP candidate before he went down last year. Cam Newton has won the MVP. There is some serious upside here. And we haven't even talked about Gronk or Mecole Hardman yet. So definitely, definitely some solid upside here. And more than anything, it just shows you how to adjust your plan, right? We tried a few different things. We went a few different players that I probably wouldn't normally go just to show how you can look ahead and really adjust your plan during your mock drafts. All right, so as you can see, that's kind of what it's all about, right? Taking a plan from the beginning and just finding ways to maneuver your way through drafts. Now, yes, we picked some different players for some different reasons to kind of see what would happen, and that's what you're supposed to do with mock drafts. It's not all about the grade you get at the end. Who cares about the grade? The last time I checked, it doesn't matter what site you do this on, if you get a draft grade, it means about as much as single-ply toilet paper because it's not taking into account all of your league settings, how many people do you start. I mean, it has no idea of all that stuff. It's just taking a consensus expert's opinion and spitting out a score. If I went through and drafted the top guy on the list every time, it would give you a higher score. Is the top guy on the list always the best player available? No, he's not. Especially if you've played fantasy football, you understand that. So don't get caught up in the draft grades. Look at the overall team. That's how you know you know, to make sure that you're set up for success all year long. Because that's what it's all about. But more than anything, get your draft plan in order. Have a backup plan just in case. If somebody zigs, you zag. That's what it's all about here. We're trying to make sure you guys have that information just to keep in the back of your mind as all your drafts are coming up here pretty close. We want to make sure that you're set up, ready to go, and ready to dominate during your fantasy football draft. Like always, though, we want to be interactive. Leave us comments down below in the comment section. Myself, Kyle. Chris, Max, somebody in Headliner Nation here will try to respond to as many questions as we possibly can this week. The season is right around the corner, and doing exercises like this only makes us better. We greatly appreciate the support. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. We appreciate you guys. Have a good one. We'll talk to you later. Thanks.